Hello everyone, my name is Diego Gutierrez Orillo and I will present to you our work titled Tracking for a Wave Equation Using Homogeneous Boundary Control. This result is a joint effort of ECO Sensor de Nantes and CICSC under the supervision of professors Juro Love, Ioannis Stefano and Frank Leston. This paper was supported by the European Research Council as part of the project called CoQuake by Atlantic 2020 and by CONACYT. This presentation is organized as follows. We will present first the importance of the wave equation, the problem statement and the control objective. Then we will show the design controller with the global input stain stability tracking result. Next, we will implement this control strategy in an earthquake prevention scenario where simulations will demonstrate how the controller can obtain a slow as seismic response over a simplified fault model. Finally, we will discuss the conclusions of our work. The wave equation is a second-order hyperbolic partial differential equation used to model the propagation of a variable in an elastic media. This equation is used in the fields of acoustics, electromagnetism, and mechanics, to name a few. In control theory, the wave equation has been studied depending on where the control input is located. For the case of a distributed control input, robust controllers designed to obtain stabilization and tracking could be found. For the case where the control input is located on the boundary, most of the results were obtained without taking into account perturbations or uncertainties in the model. Therefore, the design of a robust boundary control able to perform a tracking over the wave equation has not been sufficiently addressed yet. The wave equation to be studied is shown here. The states are u as displacement and ut as velocity. x is the space variable and can take values from 0 to d. T is the time, and C is the wave speed. This 1D wave equation has mixed boundary conditions. The first condition is at Dirichlet at x equal to 0, where the functions bar phi and beta are assumed to be sufficiently smooth, and the boundary control P is located. The second one is a Neumann condition at x equal to d representing an attached point. The control objective in our work is to design the control input P to perform a tracking over the displacement and velocity at x equal to zero. The desired reference is assumed to fulfill these conditions with a priori known bounds. The first step in the control design is to introduce an error variable Note how such an error is consistent with our tracking problem when it takes a value of zero, and also with the boundary condition at x equal to d. The error dynamics is then obtained where a new perturbation term appears on the wave equation due to the reference signal. This perturbation term is not matched to the boundary control. Therefore, it cannot be directly compensated by the input and a common stability result won't be obtained in this work. In exchange, an exponential ISR result for PDE system will be used, where the trajectories of the system will be bounded by a norm close to the origin. The ultimate bound will depend on a K-class function of the input R double dot. To get this ISS result, let us present the design control. It consists of feedback linearization terms and a homogeneous algorithm inspired by Orlov et al. 2011. The brackets notation represents a signed power function depending on the value of a. Then, when a is equal to zero, we obtain a discontinuous control which is called twisting algorithm in the sliding mode theory. On the other hand, when a is equal to 1, we obtain a linear control. 
One important feature of such a control is that it only requires feedback from the states at e is equal to zero, which reduces the amount of information needed to solve the tracking problems. The question now is how to select the control gains lambda 1 and lambda 2. We can answer this by looking at the main result of our study. Assuming the control gains are represented as shown, the error system is globally ultimately bounded in the sense of this norm with respect to some function depending on the bound of the second derivative of the reference. Therefore, the gain design depends only on the selection of the homogeneous parameter A. In order to prove this, we choose an appropriate Lyapunov functional that can be bounded with the selected norm. Even more, is radially unbounded. This later property allows to obtain global results. As a second step, we take the derivative along the error system trajectory. We can show that there exists two terms on it. One is negative definite and the other depends on the input R double dot. By using some algebraic steps, the EISS can be derived, where the ultimate bound depends on the L1 bound related to the reference and on the control gain. This shows how the ISS result can be improved by selecting correctly the reference or the control gains as much as the application requires. We will present an earthquake prevention scenario to test the design control. Earthquakes are dynamic instabilities caused by fault rupture due to a natural movement of the tectonic plates. They are the source of many catastrophic events throughout human history. Nowadays, it is generally accepted that humans can also induce or trigger earthquake. Examples of this exist in oil and gas production, geothermal energy, and CO2 sequestration. All this makes earthquake prevention an important research topic to prevent future disasters. But can earthquakes be controlled? Recently, some interesting results leading to this question have been obtained. These works have designed a control to solve stabilization and tracking over a MIMO ODE system that models a single fault. But since the wave equation models also the wave propagation over the Earth's crust, it can result in a more interesting control design using this PDE system. A simplified fault model is represented as a 1D wave equation. Again, the states are U as displacement and UT as velocity. X is the space variable and can take values from 0 to D. The fault is located at X equal to 0. X equal to D represents an attached point far from the fault. G is the shear modulus, rho is the surrounding to the fault rock's density, and C is the shear wave velocity. On the frictional interface, we apply the difference between the constant effective overboarded normal stress, sigma n, and the pressure of the fluid injected or extracted into or from the fault-like interface, p. Finally, mu is the friction coefficient, depending on the displacement, velocity, and time, and mu zero is its initial constant value. We will present now the simulations made over the considered fault model and the design control. The friction coefficient was selected as the slip weakening friction law. The desired reference was chosen to fulfill the considered assumptions. Such reference starts from zero displacement and reaches a maximum displacement d max at a time t op. Notice that t op can be conveniently chosen to reduce the ultimate bound as discussed before. The web equation was implemented in MATLAB using the finite differences approximation and a sampling time equal to one millisecond. 
three different values of A were chosen to test the homogeneous controller. The gain lambda 2 was the same for the three cases and lambda 1 was designed according to the presented theorem. The following videos show how the presented control with the parameter A equal to zero is able to achieve as low a seismic response compared to the case of an earthquake-like behavior. The control forces the system solution to follow the designed reference. The difference between these two results is more evident in the velocity, where the open loop response is of the order of meter per second and the control response is of the order of millimeters per second. These two plots show the performed tracking at x equal to zero, where the fault is located. The three cases are able to reach the same displacement as the earthquake-like behavior, but three orders of magnitude slower, dissipating the stored energy in a controlled manner. The variable of greater interest is the error variable, where the discontinuous case a equal to zero presents the highest precision results on the displacement, but the worst results on the velocity, due to its high frequency nature. The pressure injected into the fault for the three cases is practically the same, and it's not affected by the chattering effect in the discontinuous case due to its small gain. It is important to mention that such control signals present acceptable magnitudes that can be followed by common actuators, such as commercial pumps, making the control theoretically feasible to implement. To test the design control even further, we will present a scenario in which the system exhibits uncertainties in the model and a sinusoidal perturbation matched to the control. In order to avoid the chattering effect, the discontinuous function sign for the case A equal to zero was changed to a sigmoid approximation. The ISS tracking result is still obtained for all the three cases. The error variable presents oscillations due to the sinusoidal perturbation and a bigger magnitude than the nominal case in both displacement and velocity. Yet, this could be expected from the presented proof, since the ultimate bound depends on the perturbation terms affecting the wave equation. Again, the case for A equal to zero presents the best robustness properties. To conclude this presentation, we will discuss our results. We obtained a global EISS tracking error using a boundary control that only needs information of the wave equation at the boundary. The ISS result might be weaker than an exponential stabilization of the origin, but we have shown that with an appropriate selection of the reference and the control gain, the ultimate bound can be reduced. We obtain as low a seismic response over a simplified earthquake model, which may lead to natural disaster prevention and sustainable energy production. The proposed strategy seems to work also in the perturbed case, which may lead to a robust control design. The case A equal to zero presents the best robust results at a cost of using a discontinuous control signal. Our current line of research consists of the extension of the perturbed case and the addition of a diffusion process to model the control pressure dynamics. By the date of this presentation, these results might have already been solved, so be sure to keep an eye on archive. On behalf of me and all the authors, I would like to thank all of you for your attention, and we would like to invite you to check this and other interesting results in our site, Cochrane. Thank you.